So today we're going to be learning how to tat. Let me go ahead and take off this bracelet so it won't be making any noises. I've also made this bracelet. Put you right there. Actually, let's make it a little bit of decoration. So we'll just put it right along here. There we go. All right, so tatting has been around for a very, very long time, and we'll do a history of tatting video another time. But for now, we're going to actually get started with tatting. That said, if you don't have a tatting shuttle, you can get started with some thread if you're daring, but it will be much harder to see what you're doing, or just some yarn. This is crochet yarn size 3. I recommend it because it's easily available in craft stores such as Michael's. And it's bigger so you can see what you're working with better. This bracelet is made with that size thread. There's also crochet yarn size 10. Ooh, a little speck of dust, sorry. There's crochet yarn size 10, and it makes for a much finer detail, and I find it a great all-around size for tatting with. In fact, this was probably made with something about that size. I thrifted this, so I have no way of knowing for certain because I didn't make it, but yes. But first, before we get to that, and for instance, the only place locally to me that sells tatting shuttles is Hobby Lobby, and I know many of us do not want to support that particular store for whatever reasons, but you also don't need to spend $4 on a tatting shuttle to get started to see if you even like the hobby. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make our own tatting shuttle. So you're going to need some scrap cardboard. So I'm going to just cut this out. That way I have a little piece that I'm working with, so it's not a lot. And so you want to make a shape that's shaped kind of like an eye, but it's a little skinnier. And I recommend about two and a half inches by three quarters of an inch, but you can go a bit wider as well. Either way is fine. But I recommend to draw it first. So, and as you see, it's not perfect. It's a bit lopsided. That's okay. But this will be a great way to see what size tatting shuttle would be optimal for you because they do make different size tatting shuttles. In fact, I have a whole collection and we'll get into that another time. But if you're brand new to tatting, don't have access to a shuttle, don't have a shuttle already, let's let's make your own. Grab some cardboard, draw an eyeball shape. Not an eyeball shape, the shape of an eye. And then cut it out. And this is a great way to reuse some of your recycling as well. And when I was at the Poplar Hill Mansion in Salisbury, Maryland for their May Festival, we ran out of the 3D printed tatting shuttles that I brought to teach people how to tat with. And the lovely curator, Sarah, I believe her name is, found me a cardboard box and I made my own shuttles to continue teaching people and to be able to send them off with yarn. Now, now you don't need to use a hole puncher, but I happen to have one, so I'm going to use that. And something about like that. So a little bit offset, and then you'll want to Cut some slits. There we go. So you have a bit of an opening. I recommend making them a little bit tapered so that way it loads up easy but doesn't come unwound unnecessarily easy. Just to make your life a little bit more pleasant. And if you don't have access to a hole punch, you could just cut a slit, cut out a little circle with some scissors, and 
it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be actually, in fact, hidden in here are little heart shapes. I don't feel like unwinding it, but they're shaped like little hearts as opposed to circles. And I really need to put the 3D uh, printable file up on the website, but that's not there right now. We'll do that later. But yes, so we'll have this. And then you'll want to take your yarn tie it in the middle just a single double knot a single double knot a simple double knot is nice there we go and then you'll want to wind it up And you hear how there's almost that clicking noise? And there you go, your very first tatting shuttle. Nothing to write home about, pretty well disposable, but you can still use it for tatting. Also, something good to note about these. If you're deciding, oh, this might be a little wide for my hands, can pretty generally well trim it up in order to get it just right for yourself. But yes, I I think I'll go ahead and make a post after this stream within the next week on the blog, thegracefulwitch.com, with a printable file that you can use to cut out and trace onto cardboard and make your own shuttle. It'll be a free printable because... It'd be silly to charge for such a thing. Alright, that being said, I personally don't want to use the cardboard one. <laughs> but, yes. I will note that I am left-handed, but I'm going to be tatting like a right-handed person in order to go slower and show you all better. So... You'll generally want to make sure that the thread is coming off on the right hand side of the shuttle. You want to grab the very end of the thread and loop it around the back of your fingers like this. And you want to pinch it again with your, your fingertips on your index and your thumb. So index and thumb and you'll be holding everything fairly taut but not super taut. Then you'll want to bring this out a little bit more and you'll want to kind of brace that a little bit with your pinky. It's, your pinky is great for controlling tension. So you'll want to go under this thread and then back through the middle of the loop that you make. So you see how this loop is right here. That's not exactly what we want. We are halfway there to the first half of the double stitch. But we actually want the loop, this loop here, to be going around this thread. Like this shuttle, we want it to actually transfer. So what you want to do is very lightly, now listen to what I'm going to say before you go ahead and make the motions because you'll end up losing your knot. You'll want, so first you'll want to, it's actually a simultaneous motion, but for simplicity's sake, you're going to first pull this thread on the shuttle along with ever so slightly slackening the tension with your fingers on your left hand. So, and it flips just like that. So I'm going to undo that and redo it in case you had a little bit of trouble there. I'm controlling the tension with this pinky here. I'm going under and up like a bunny rabbit coming out of the hole, out of his little bunny home. And then he's going to look around and then he's going to jump down in the other hole. And then you're going to want to Slacken the tension and pull pretty quickly at the same time. Come on. Oh, 
didn't want to go. And this is why I recommend chatting with your dominant hand. But yes, up through the hole, down through, slacken a little, and pull. And that went nice and smoothly, but was very blurry. So we're going to do it once more. Focus on this hand camera. Tension. Up through. Back down. Slacken and pull. And there you go. You just need to slacken your tension ever so slightly and pull with a similar amount of force. Now, now that you have done that once, we're going to do the second half of the double stitch. So, make sure that thread is still coming off on the right hand side of your shuttle. And this is the shuttle, by the way, if I hadn't mentioned that before, the thing that we made. So you'll actually want to go down this hole. So your hand's still in the same position. You're going to want to go down this hole, but not all the way through. So you're not going to come down this way. You're coming down this way. So it's in the middle of this. So I'm going to actually restart that. So we're going to go down in the middle and then we're going to come up through the hole. The hole that the bunny jumped back down before, he's actually coming out of. Like he jumped down the one hole, it's like he's jumping through a bunny tunnel. So you see how that's very similar looking to the last one for that first step? And then it's a similar situation. You release the tension on this hand, on your left hand, and you pull with your right hand. And there you go. It's a double stitch. And it should be able to slide. And that, that's how you do the double stitch. So we're going to do a few, we're going to do about eight more and then I'm going to end this video because this is the video one. Next video we'll do picos and joins, but we're going to first finish this a little bit. So first, oh, oh, I switched. I switched my fingers around. Didn't mean to confuse you all. So first we're going to come up out the bunny hole and then we're going to jump back in the, the other bunny hole. Release the tension and pull. Check with a slide. All is good. All is well. Then we're going to jump through the bunny hole and then jump back up through the bunny hole. Release the tension and pull with the shuttle and do another slide test. There we go. And then there you have it, the second double stitch. So one thing that I've noticed a lot of people struggle with when tatting, when learning to tat, is figuring out which one is the shuttle thread. It's important to, at least when you're first getting started, to not put down the ring or the, this bit that you're working with with your left hand. It's very important to hang on to it because you'll lose track pretty easily of where things are supposed to be. So in this instance, it's going to look a little bit like the letter X. The one that's supposed to move is going to be the one that's not with the tail. So you see how it's long wise and there's these two lids to these two little containers if you want to call a double stitch a container you want it to be going through that way and I will actually draw that to make it a little easier so So this is where the thread that you want to slide is. I suppose if you want to be crass, it looks like a butt. <laughs> if that makes it easier for you to remember, you want the thread to slide through the butt. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> but you want 
these to stay put. The one that slides through the butts of this double stitch are going to be connected to the shuttle on one end and then the loop for your hand on the other. In fact, this is actually part of the loop, which will connect up to here. My beautiful, very, very technical uh, diagram. So yes, that being said, it takes some time. You'll mess up a lot, and that's okay. It's perfectly okay. It took me two weeks to learn how to regularly do the double stitch. I don't think I was able to do a single double stitch for a full 48 hours, despite trying here and there during breaks and afternoon and all that sort of thing. Have some tea. All right. So we're going to do this again now that there's been another moment. So if you're watching this, either you've been continuing to do it or you've stopped and are frustrated. So we're going to go slow again. Make sure we have enough yarn hanging out here. Grab this with your pinky just to give it some extra tension. Assume the position. You're going to grab the whole thing, but the butts are going to be facing the shuttle hand. The butts will not be facing this way. That's wrong. The little butts of the double stitch need to be facing inwards. The little waistband on the little little butts, it's wearing a little belt, they're going to be facing away from you. They're going to be facing your left side, unless you're learning to tat with your left hand, which I fully intend to make videos on how to do at another point. But here we go. Pinky for tension. You're going to have your bunny jump up through the hole. Oh, don't like that. He's going to jump down the other one. And I suppose a groundhog would be more akin, but I've already used bunny. We're sticking with it for now. Now, when the camera focuses, come on, buddy. All right. We're going to release a little tension and pull with this. There we go. It's important to release with a little tension. You might have noticed my fingers actually pulled back a little, and sometimes it's a marriage of movement, and it takes a while to get the hang of. Now we have the first half of the double stitch down. We're going to go back over, down through the bunny hole, eat a little snack, then come back up. And then, there you go. And now we have another little butt wearing a belt. Those actually look like bunny, bunny ears. So I suppose I need to rephrase how I do this. Maybe when I do another 101 video, but for now, here we are. Alrighty. So up out the bunny hole, down in the other one. Release and pull. Grab with the pinky, down the bunny hole, and back on up. Release and pull. And as you see, these have all continued to do good. It still slides along, which is beautiful. Now we're going to keep going, and your homework is to make 16 of these and then close up the ring. I'm going to show you this, but it's only going to be the one show part, so if you need to rewatch this section, you'll have to watch it on YouTube and rewind it. So we have four. So this will be good practice for you to practice your double stitch, and I actually encourage you to keep doing this until the next live stream that we do this with. So down the bunny hole, up through. Oh, nope, I did it backwards. Uh-oh. Do as I say, not as I do. Ah, and 
I said to set I said it too. Okay, up, down, pull, check. Cool. Down, up, pull. Here we go. Up. Down. That was very clumsily done, but it got the job done. And then pull. Check. Then down. Up. Ooh. Pull and check. Up. Down. Pull. Check. Down. Up. Pull. And as you see here, I made a mistake. It's not sliding anymore. So you'll want to unpick it. Many shuttles have little picks where you can do that with. But if you're using the cardboard one, you won't. So I actually recommend getting a, saf a safety pin, a sewing needle, something like that ever so gently going in so you can help work it loose and then just undo that whole half of that stitch but seriously the sewing needle really does help or the sewing pin the safety pin as long as it's sturdy enough so see how that slides again now, you have to remember we only did one half of this double stitch. Come on, camera. Stop. There we go. So, we have to finish this stitch up. So we're going to go down and then back up. Pull. Come on. My hands have decided that they are not pleased with the situation. It is still not going. If you watch my other videos, I swear I know how to tat. <laughs> I'm just learning how to do it with my non-dominant hand so I can be, one, a better teacher, and two, it slows things down and it allows for mistakes like that so I can teach y'all how to handle them. Okay. So. Down, and then back up, oh, come on, and then pull and relax, and then slide check. There we go. Then we're going to go up, down, pull, oh, come on. I think it's safe to say my hands have fatigued. They are not used to doing it this in this position. You hear that crack? That was a loud one. So down, through. There we go. Oop, it did it again. Pinky is really not having it. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have to do a handful more. Up, down, pop, down, up, pop. And this is called flipping the, 
flipping the thread, or flipping the stitch, or transferring the knot. There's a whole bunch of names for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Up, down, pull. And as you get more practice, you will get the hang of it. There we go. Or not. Up and through. Sometimes that helps. And then down and through. There we go. That one went nice and easy. Or... Okay, well, I messed up now. So sometimes you might have to pick out multiples. Remember that pin I told you you'd need? Or the safety the safety pin, the sewing needle. I need that again. And this is why when you're just starting out, it is very important to check every half stitch after the first one. The first one you can't check with the slide. But this but after the second one. After the second half of the first double stitch, you can check with the slide every time. See? So, up, down, pull, slide. Down, up, pull, slide. See, there we go. Up, down. Oh, it's not going. So you can, you have permission to bring it back up to your finger, and then pull and try to transfer. If it doesn't go, you can always slide it back up. Test with the slide, then down and then back up. Test with the slide. All right. So once you have 16, I want you to uh, gently hold the knots nearest. So with the thread that's nearest to the shuttle, I want you to gently hold the knots. Gently hold them firmly, but don't pinch them with an inch of their life. It's not going to be good for the knots. It's not going to look great. Politely. And then you want to pull. pull. Keep pulling. 
You can readjust if you feel you need to. So you see how that's looking a little bit like a, like a rainbow in terms of the arch. You want to continue to hold that and you want to pull, pull, pull until you get a ring. So over the next week, your homework is to practice doing the double stitch and making 16 double stitches and then closing these rings. Come here. until you feel a lot more comfortable and confident with your shuttle. But yeah. Oop. I lost it. There we go. Now granted, I wasn't counting the stitches for this one, but that's what five years of practice looks like, along with me using my dominant hand, so it's much more comfortable. <laughs> but yes, so that's all for today. We've just learned how to make rings, we've learned how to make double stitches, and that's honestly a lot when you're just starting out. So let's be happy for what we've managed to accomplish today, and we're going to actually write it in here. Lesson. So lessons. Okay, so we have one. Make shuttle. Make and load shuttle plus double stitch and rings. So next week we're going to focus on joining rings and picos. So that will be a lot of fun as well. So see you all in the next lesson. Bye-bye!